I'm going to invite up to stage Phil Agkowili, who is a senior vice president of, at U.S. Bank Corp and the chief information security officer at Elevon. He's been an influential leader in the information security industry for 25 years and has established industry-leading security organizations from startups to Fortune 25. He was previously the CISO at Cox Communications, VeriSign, and Secure IT, and led successful global security teams at Dell, Scientific Atlantic, and General Electric. He's a co-founding member of the Cloud Security Alliance and co-authored the Cloud Controls Matrix. Phil's a... Uh, Phil's done a lot. Yeah, he's done a lot. I can't even <laughs> pronounce that. Um, <laughs> he started uh, in a solid... Uh, I'm sorry, he has started and sold several startups. Phil is a winner of the inaugural Information Security Executive of the Decade Award 2014, uh, Eventa Top 25 Global Breakaway Leadership Award, the 2012 RSA Conference Excellence in Information Security Award, the 2010 Information Security Magazine Security 7 Award, and the 2009 IISE of the Year Central Award. Okay, that's totally embarrassing at this point. Thank you. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please give a warm case you welcome to Phil Aquili. Thank you. So, so I, I didn't want to kill you guys with uh, death by PowerPoint, so that's what I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here for that for you all. So the, the interesting part about my bio for you all is I'm here to actually help you on what's, what's after college. So for those that are here already, right, so how, are, what, are you guys close to figuring out what your, what your career is? Any, raise your hand what you want to do. Anybody here want to do cybersecurity? All right, so about, about uh, 10 of you. Oh, Steven's already, so you're already doing it. Uh, how about you, uh, for those of you, for those that aren't, are you just, are you here because you want to understand it more, maybe possibly look at a career? Okay, so there's a few of those as well. So, so I, I'm not going to be as flashy as the FBI guy because ultimately I actually want to talk to you about something serious, which is uh, your livelihood. I think that's important. And um, from a career perspective, I don't re actually even want to get to the point where, where the FBI was talking about all the bad guys that are out there because the one thing I want you to know is, you know, if you're, if you're driving out of here today, if you're out on 575 and you're heading down to Atlanta, right, imagine yourself on a, on a, a super highway that had 100 lanes. Uh, what you have to understand about the, the state of the world today is that if you, if you are on a 100 lane highway, there's 27 other cars that are out there that are either trying to run you off the road and disrupt you, or they're trying to hijack, hijack you in your car. And, and that's the state of the world today. And, and the reality is I think folks like the FBI and the Secret Service are probably at a better place when it comes to understanding kind of the nature of the bad guys, criminals, cybercrime. So for me, for you, I, I really wanted to get to the, the brass tacks of it. Why, in some ways, why you're at school. It's your career. It's your, it's your livelihood. And, and for me, one of the things that I want you to uh, you recognize is, uh, you know, it's, cybersecurity today is an incredibly important job. Whether you're uh, in, in a nonprofit organization um, making, uh, you know, making sure that cancer victims are, are, are safe with American Cancer Society here in Atlanta, or if you're uh, in a multi-trillion dollar conglomerate, which is U.S. Bank, which is uh, the, the fifth largest bank in the United States and has $26 trillion in revenue. And so I'm at their payment processing division. So one thing that for you all to, to know is in Atlanta, there are seven major payment processors, so credit cards. There are seven other processors that are here in Atlanta, and there are 38 other comp there's 38 companies in the financial technology industry that are based out of here in Atlanta. And it's an incredible work um, because the, the criminals are out there, and it's easier to go make money instead of uh, hijacking somebody physically and going to a bank and stealing money. It's easier just from your bedroom and to try to... Uh, try to steal money out of a bank or steal money out of the transactional systems in the financial, uh, financial institutions that are out there. Cybersecurity, to, uh, cybersecurity is just an amazing, uh, 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 incredibly difficult job today. And for me, for you, I think for the 10 of you that know that this is what you want to be, it, the, the opportunities in cybersecurity is just absolutely tremendous. Um, uh, so, so one of the things I want to share with you is um, uh, there are a lot of instances already today. I don't know if you ever, has anybody here heard about the, the, uh, the digital Pearl Harbor that's gonna, potentially going to happen to us? 
there, there's been about eight of them that have, have already happened. Um, and, and folks like the FBI and the Secret Service and, and the White House, they pension, pay attention to those. And largely, for, for all of us, we don't even feel it. We don't even recognize it. Because largely, when it comes to a digital penetration, especially of financial assets, uh, it, it's lost to you because the bank, yet ten, it tends to be the banks, they, they eat the losses that are there. So if you, guys, if you all have a chance, take a look at this year, but just Google SWIFT. Several hundred millions of dollars, almost a trillion dollars of money have been stolen through the SWIFT banking network with all the global banks that are out there. And again, the, the opportunity for folks that do penetration testing, that have general IT experience, it's just tremendous right now to get into cyber and to, and to be able to win really high paying, high value, long term career type of roles. And so uh, for those of you that are here already, and especially the folks that, are, that know you want to be in cyber, have you all already started any kind of IT experience? Have you all gone and gotten any jobs? Some, some of you have, have basic IT experience already? No, not yet? And so you know, the reason why I'm asking is because I think it's important for you guys to get experience. That, that's a bottom line period. Um, you know, today, the, the data basically out there, if you take a look at bur the Burning Glass Cybersecurity Jobs Report, uh, today, one of the most important things for you to know in winning a job in cybersecurity, 84% of employers are looking for people with a uh, bachelor's degree, 84%. And um, there's some data that's out there that basically goes out there and says that, you know, for all the graduates that we uh, graduate in the United States today, that's the top 10% in China. That's the top 15% in India. So if you look at the global, uh, global job market in the next 10, 15 years, you're competing in the global job market with already highly educated, uh, highly trained people from other countries that are winning jobs uh, outside of the US and they have better credentials than all of, the, uh, all of the kids coming out of college in the United States. And so you all, I think, are doing the right thing, getting a degree here at KSU. And I, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of the cyber program here and the security program. This is my third year speaking uh, for this program. So I'm, I'm happy to come here and try to uh, if, if you're not decided yet to come here, uh, I'm telling you now, you know, if you, um, if you take a look, the jobs are just tremendous. There's just tons of opportunity. And getting your degree is the first step. Um, the interesting part is the second step in landing a job with a hire, someone that's hiring like me. Because I've hired 100 people uh, in Atlanta and Knoxville, Tennessee in the last year, 100. It's not, you know, it's not in the AJC, it's not in the um, Atlanta Business Chronicle, but we're just hiring because the need to defend is just tremendous, again. And the other piece is, the second step, I know you're writing notes, 83% of the people that are hiring for, for these jobs, they require somebody to have, you all, to have at least three years of experience. Whoa, how do you get that in college? Well, so I went to Virginia Tech and I went to Rensselaer Polytechnic, I'm a mechanical engineer. My mom made me co-op. <laughs> I, I didn't want to go to work, I was having fun, just totally having fun in my fraternity house. Um, with my friends. But the interesting part is that co-op led to a summer intern with General Electric and led to my first job offer when I got out of college. And so that second one is really important. 84% uh, require a bachelor's degree. 83% of employers require at least three years of work experience. And, and the interesting part on those statistics for you all is it's really easy. For me, um, you know, finding information security people uh, with these two basic characteristics it's a, it's a unicorn, actually, uh, and I'll tell you why. The job market right now, uh, in the last job report that I saw for cyber, said that there is a negative 27% um, job rate out there. Uh, and so that basically says that means there's millions of jobs that are open, and there's not enough people to fill those jobs. All the while, the cri those first two criteria are out there that require, right, a, bat, a college degree, and then also require the job experience, and we can't find the right people at this point, even with just those, or we're fighting over the same talent. And so for me, the neat part is, you know, I'm looking for folks like yourselves that, you know, maybe you're an English degree, or maybe you're even a musician. Some of the best cybersecurity analysts that I have in my detection team, they, they're right-brained, they're creatives. They, they, they're my writers, they're the creative folks, and so they think differently, and they think like a hacker does, and try to figure out, okay, if they're breaking into my network, here's what I need to be looking for, and they're the ones analyzing all of the logs that my team has, and they're looking for signs of compromise. 
So don't think that because you're in a different degree uh, and not in a te te technology type of degree, you can't line, land, land a cyber job. Again, the rules of the road, right? Repeat after me, a degree, right? Three years of experience. So think about it. I mean, you can get experience with Steven here um, in the ITS team. I'm sure they have tons of opportunity um, at Kennesaw State. Uh, the other universities, you know, um, have tons of opportunities. And so I'm going to give you the, the biggest trick that I have found. I got to look at my statistics because I'm about to sound like I'm a, um, I'm a, I'm a rah rah guy here. So I, I'm a big fan of Atlanta. I left Atlanta for a couple of years. I went to Austin, Texas. Cool city, six companies. So Atlanta, um, this is a 2016 study that I read. Atlanta is classified as an alpha city. It has the fourth largest number of Fortune 1000 companies in the city, the fourth largest. There's 18 Fortune 1000 companies in Atlanta, headquartered out of Atlanta. There are 29 Fortune 500 companies based out of Atlanta. I'm going to give you the best statistic you're going to hear all day. There are 1,000 250 companies in the Atlanta area. 1,250 companies. I'm going to tell you a funny little secret with me. You're just going to have to find one stupid company to hire you. That's how I started my career. I'm like, geez, just one of these guys would be dumb enough to hire me. And as I progressed in my career, it became, boy, I'm going to find someone dumb enough to let me be a manager. And I had good leadership qualities and instincts that I kept progressing, got training internal, and I've been a chief information security officer for, for 12 years. And uh, I'm in my mid-40s. And so it's a young person's job. So I've been a leader for the la over a decade. So in my early 30s, I was leading people that were twice my age in a very nascent new field. Because I graduated 23 years ago, I was sitting in your seats. I probably wouldn't be in your seats. I'd still probably be in my fraternity house goofing around. You know, 23 years ago, I was in your all seats. And at the end of the day, the one co-op that my mother made me go on paid dividends for the rest of my career. Because that was my first job experience. It was with General Electric. It was the Fortune 1 company on the planet. And I didn't respect it when I was there. But when I was graduating, that was the only company that offered me two jobs. And I had 35 other. Um, uh, notices, no thank you notices for other jobs that I had applied for. And so I just wanted to share that with you. The opportunity is here in Atlanta. The opportunity is right now where you're at. You're in school. You have time to breathe. You have time to build experience. And don't think about the pay right now. You need the experience. Because the starting pay of most InfoSec jobs in the private sector are $65,000. The average pay of an information security expert with at least three years and a sort of security certification is $118,000 a year. That's six figures for those that are totally asleep and not math students or were like me hanging out in the fraternity house goofing off, right? That's six figures. Think about that. You graduate when you're 24 years old. You're making six figures for the rest of your life. I'm going to do a little quick math for you, right? So if you're making six figures for 10 years, how much money did you just make before taxes? One million dollars. In 10 years in this field, you will be a millionaire. If I could drop my mic, I'd do a mic drop right now. But think about that. How many other, how many other jobs are you going to take a look at that you have the opportunity to that you could basically walk out within your first three years and make six figures? For me, you know, I know there's a pen tester in the back that spoke yesterday. My, my mom and dad looked at me when I started doing pen testing when I was 24 years old was, do you get paid for that? And that was in 1993. And I'm like, yeah, apparently. It's great. You know, I'm basically, I wore black all day in jeans. I'm still wearing jeans. I'm still wearing jeans. You know, and I'm, I, I call my own shots. And, you know, and I'm doing the jobs that I love and I'm doing with the teams of people that I, I love all day long. And so that's what I want to give you all. If you... If, if, if I can give you a nudge into a career, and it's not just the money. The one thing you got to understand about information security, it's information security, if you're doing it for the money, it's going to last for a little while. Actually, for 10 years it'll last, right, because then you made your million bucks. Again, pre-tax. You can ask the FBI guy on the tax piece. Um, 
Uh, but ultimately, when you're, when you're out of there, you, you've hopefully socked some of that away, and then you can make your call. The people I think that, um, you know, historically that I've been trying to appeal to when I've come here is the people that are in for the long haul, for the love of it. You know, information security, is an, is, it's, a, it's a not boring field. It's, it's, it, it's different every day. When I open up my browser at night, when I open it up in the morning, or I get my feed, my link feed in, I, I see crazy stuff happening every day. There's a new compromise. There's a new vulnerability. There's a new, just something crazy with John Bonet Ramsey and her email, by the way. I'll answer that question from earlier. It was email. That means they needed a forensics person to go take a look at the father's email because he was emailing stuff that looked like he knew what was going on with his daughter. So the short of it is, you know, everything, so 23 years ago when I graduated from college, when I was in your shoes and I was just another kid like you all, right, I had no money either and I had debt. You know, this job to me, from the early, from as soon as I started digging my teeth into it, I'm like, man, this is fun. It's like every, every situation is unique and everything is, every, it's challenging. And there are people that are collecting the paycheck and then there's a, there's a small group of us that are kind of the heroes of the industry that very quietly we're helping defend the planet. <laughs> because if you take a look at it today, everything is digitally connected, pretty much everything is digitally connected, everything. Again, the, you know, when I came here five years ago, it, that probably wasn't true, but there is so much interconnected today. I mean, in my pocket, I have two very powerful computers. How many computers do you all have at home? Your smartphones, your NES, your, you know, your, your IP phones, your set-top boxes, your, just think about all the, your Xbox, your PlayStation. All that stuff is talking home. Who? All that stuff has a camera on it. Who's watching you? By the way, just a little side note, right? I mean, you know, Zuckerberg this year said put tape over your camera. The head of the NSA said, yeah, you should put tape over your camera because people are watching you even when the little light's not on. That's the state of the world today. You got 27 other people in a 100-lane road trying to run you off the road or, or hijack you. And to me, the, this career is one of those ones where you, it, the really good folks in this industry, they have a love for it. it it's, there is required lifelong learning when I go to bed, when I wake up, I'm reading. I'm always trying to teach myself stuff. I'm trying to teach my people. And so it's one of those ones where if you have that and you're an introvert, you can read on your own. You can teach yourself. I'm self-taught in information security. No one taught me how to break into stuff. I saw war games in 1985. I was, geez, I was 13 years old. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. What's a modem? I want one. And in 1985, I, my, my closest modem to my house was at Radio Shack. So I was that chubby little Filipino kid going to Radio Shack all day long, dialing all sorts of stuff. You know, and ultimately, it's that enjoyment that I'm, I'm telling you all, like, I totally love it. Like, I'm very passionate about this industry. I think there's just tons of opportunity um, uh, for you all. And so, yeah, hopefully the statistics on, on Atlanta um, make you want to stick around here because, um, you know, I, I think... I think Atlanta is a great place to start. So where do you start, right? You get, you find an IT job. Just look for IT specialist on the bulletin boards, you know, on Indeed or on hot jobs. So look for systems administration. Look for network administration. Look for router administration, router management. Some of you that may be, I don't know, breaking into stuff already here at school, be nice to Steven and his team. Let him know you're doing stuff and maybe he'll, He'll give you some job, some errands to do. Um, you know, there's great jobs in penetration testing. Um, so I would take a look at those kind of um, skills. There's also for those that are like uh, like like English type of folks, uh, lit majors, even the magician uh, 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 musician types. There are compliance and audit jobs you may want to take a look at. That you can um, start learning about information security, doing compliance and audit type work. And then you can kind of, um, uh, you're kind of on the other side of the fence of the InfoSec team, but you're doing the same work. You're trying to keep a company safe, trying to help users. And then the other piece, what I would really pay attention to is, again, 1,250 companies. That's the opportunity. You just have to beat the street. And the funny part is a lot of these companies 
Your first three years, I'm telling you, your first three years, it's not about the pay. It's land the job. Stick the job. Stick the landing on the job. Get somebody dumb enough to hire you. Build basic experience and then find your way to kind of switch over because there are other chief information security officers just like me that we're struggling to find the right talent. It's part of why I come up here because I know you're the next generation to come in, so I'm building a relationship with you all because some of you three years from now is when you graduate and hopefully you've now had some experience. Then I can hire you or I can send you off to my friends. You can kind of make mistakes with them and then I hire you, when you, get, you, you after you get jobs with my friends and their companies. Or you can make mistakes here on Steven's network. Sorry. You learn through your mistakes. Um, the other piece is looking for co-op and intern. Um, of the 18 major companies out of Atlanta, almost all of them have co-op and summer intern programs. Uh, I would start looking around January for those of you that are sophomores to even seniors. Around January is when you should look. By the way, when you, when you summer intern your co-op, you tend to have to defer your graduation by six months, just heads up. Uh, it actually worked out for me because I mean, that meant for me, I, uh, I got to do a little makeup work because I'm doing too much fraternity time um, one summer when I, after I co-opt. And so it gives you time to kind of recover with some of your grades. A lot of times you're, the employers that you're, uh, that you're going for, they're not looking at your grades, they're looking at aptitude. And they're looking at attitude. So another thing to think about, um, when you're sitting here in university, everything kind of tends to be black and white. Don't let that be when you're job interviewing. Things aren't perfect in the real world, they're not. So um, have passion for the job as you're interviewing, but just know that there's kind of, there's a, real, there's a reality of the job. Um, you know, so where I'm kind of going to here is when, you're in, when you do go interview, don't, you know, there's a, a lot of companies and probably even the university, there's thousands of problems. You know, and you're, you're trying to get a job there, so you, you, know, you have to put your best foot forward. That's the best way I can put it, right? You gotta be dressed up. You have to have the experience, and you have to have a good attitude when you go for that interview. Um, you know, one of my other tips for you is like when I co-opt and I summer interned, I said no, I said yes to everything that they gave me. Yes to everything. When they asked me to run the mainframe security, uh, okay, what's the mainframe? When they asked me to just reset passwords for six months, okay, do I get double pay for that? Do I get overtime? You know, hey, we wanted to change all the routers because GE just got taken over by Lockheed Martin. Will you change the routers? Oh, routers, okay. So now I got router experience. Will you do Unix administration? Sure, I'll do Unix administration. I did some of this Slack, ELF Slackware stuff like early on in the early 90s. And so I got to do HPUX and Solaris when that first came out in the early 90s. And so that's my other thing. When you're there, good, have a good attitude. Just don't say no. Whatever your, your, your company is asking you to do, uh, say yes to it. One of the things I wanna um, share with you is the final piece. Um, it's the third piece in landing the job. So first you get your degree, right? Second is you get the three years of job experience. The one third of all employers, or 35% in the last statistic that I saw, requires a security certification. So the main one that's out there is called the Certified Information Security uh, Systems Professional, CISSP. That is the big one. Anyone here already doing ROTC military stuff or thinking about going to the military? So there's something out there um, from the Department of Defense called 85, DOD 8570. So there's a basic requirement from the DOD 8570 that requires a security certification. The most basic one out there is the A plus security certification or a, um, a commensurate or better one, CISSP, if you got the skills. So that's really what I wanted to share with you today because I think, it, it, you know, for those of you that are here, the job market, is, it's just absolutely through the charts right now. There, there are literally, in the United States, the last time I checked, was 287,000 unfilled jobs in over six months. 287, over a quarter million jobs and there's other people that are jobless. And so, but it, you, you, got, you got to be that magic unicorn. You need those first two elements to even get a job with somebody like me. And I'm telling you, Atlanta is just the best place to go do it. And if you, if you, beep, if you pound the street and you find one of those 1,250 companies to be dumb enough to give you your first IT job and then wiggle, wiggle your time in there to figure out okay, when I'm a, if I'm a Windows admin or if I'm a, 
a, a Unix admin or if I become a desktop admin or I'm the help desk, what are, what's the security element of the job and start picking up security experience while you're in an entry level IT job. Find a way to um, find security work. I'll, I'll give you some examples, right? When you're a Windows admin or Unix admin, patching, that's, that's security. I'm telling you, even at the fifth largest bank in the United States, patching, it's incredibly hard. Incredibly hard. Because basically patches come up every day, right? When's the last time any of you guys patched your nest? Or patched your, your Wi-Fi router, your, your, your Linksys? When did you patch, when's the last time you updated the firmware on that thing? By the way, you may want to check it when you get back home because it's probably exploitable. Right, and so there's tons of opportunity. That's work experience actually when you're managing your own technology at your house. You know, even my basic pen testing experience that I got when I first uh, graduated, that totally was there. So I didn't want to come in with any flash and sizzle this year. I wanted to kind of um, just give you the facts. Um, we, the FBI is hiring. You gotta go to Quantico. There's the gun carrying types and there's the non-gun carrying types based off of qualifications. There's the private sector part, which pays a lot more than the FBI part, by the way, and you don't get shot. Come join me in the private sector. It's probably the best place to go. When the FBI guys retire, they try to join me in the private sector. Seriously. DHS folks are always hitting me up for jobs. So the private sector is where the, private sector is where the money's at. The private sector is where a lot of investments are as well. A lot of the high-tech changes that are going on are in the private sector. And we have the most to lose. We're, we're defending America's intellectual capital. We're, we're defending America's uh, uh, financial backbone and the economy. And so companies like mine and the different companies that I've been at, at whether it be Dell or at a telecommunications company, um, there, we are all looking for cybersecurity folks. So, love to find out if there's, there's any questions. As I, uh, any, anyone have any questions? Sure. I got a question. You said it's a young man's game. Uh, me myself, I'm reinventing myself from uh, Milford. Um, do you recommend uh, interning at a startup, or what path do you think I should take? So, great question. So, the question was for the folks on the on the live feed is. For folks that are kind of in, chain, in, in uh, job transition that are later in their careers. It's a nice way to put it, right? You know, the, I, th I think the best way to go about it is don't negate the, your, your, the sum of your experience that you had before. So leverage those, especially in a security role. And the reality is if you have to gain the basic experiences that are out there that'll get you a cyber role. Like the reality is you could, pro you could probably walk in and do a compliance role for, for one of my groups having um, experience around, um, finding a place where you can get secure, um, like uh, uh, FISMA experience. Did you ever run into FISMA in the government? Or any of the DOD NIST certifications that are out there, the National Institute of Science and Technology. Um, so those folks that are out there, uh, how would you start? You know, you, I think you have the sum of your experience and I think it's okay to take a step back to move forward. And so if you seek to get an entry level position in a compliance role or an audit role, I think you can easily land, you can land a role with multiple years of experience. You just have to find the right idiot to offer you the job. I am one of those folks. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you all, like, uh, and I've shared this in the past um, when I've come here, I'm, I'm an immigrant. I was born in another country. Now, I am, myself and my parents are the American dream and so, uh, cybersecurity has been one of these just amazing stories for, uh, it's one of those amazing stories. I, I lucked into it and right now, 20 years ago, I told people you should get into technolo technology, you should have IT experience. I'm telling everyone now, forget just the IT experience, get cyber experience because five, 10 years from now, if you're in, med if you're in medical healthcare, if you're in automotive, if you're in any other technology field, you're gonna have to know a little about, about how to keep people safe. It'll be, again, another basic, um, basic building block besides just having a degree or a certification. Having some IT experience, having some security experience, it's in any job you have, even if you're in the movie industry, you're gonna have to know how to defend yourself. Look at Sony. So, you know, I, I think you just, have to, you just have to hustle and you're gonna find somebody. I'll give you my card. So. Any other questions? Yes. 
so when I was a kid, my dad had me, well, so I'm kind of little. So when I was little, my dad told me I needed to know how to fight. And uh, so just growing up, basically every combat sport uh, my dad put me in. I did competitive taekwondo when uh, the Olympics were coming up. And uh, I was graduated from college in 1993 when the first UFC popped up, and my dad sent me a VHS tape. And uh, I've pretty named some, name a fighter in the southeast, and I've probably trained with them. Uh, I actually got a hip replacement a couple years ago, and uh, uh, I'm not the same person that I was, but uh, uh, I like to train in mixed martial arts. Yep. And by the way, the neat part about it is there's a there's similarity between um, uh, martial artists and mixed martial artists and cybersecurity professionals, because what happens is you tend to train under a master in martial arts, and you may go to another master and you, you start developing a lineage of the arts that you pick up. In cybersecurity, what you'll find is, um, and I'm proud to announce it, I mean, my 13th CISO is about to start his job on Monday at another company um, from where I'm currently at. So there's a lineage that's out there too on the leaders that are out there that are kind of helping groom and develop the next generation of security experts. So there's a, there's a in the, in the um, information security world, there's a large number of Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners, wrestlers, uh, mixed martial artists, Krav Maga experts that are there in cyber. Yep. So don't mess with us. We'll hack you and beat the heck out of you. Anyways, <laughs> I don't need a gun. Yes? I was gonna talk about your cards too. Sure. Any other questions? Oh, go ahead, Chris. So for someone who doesn't have those two years of experience that you talk about, you know, you made yourself into one, you mentioned co ops and internships. Um, are there other avenues for getting that, say, like volunteer work or that kind of Absolutely. I think there's tons of volunteer activities. You know, there's the Atlanta Mission. Uh, United Way here in town, there's the American Red Cross, there's American Cancer Society, there's tons of, uh, if you look, if you look on Tech Bridge, if you, if you Google Tech Bridge, that's a nonprofit with some of the largest um, uh, uh, nonprofits here that are supported by the who's who and chief information officers. That's kind of like my boss, that's the people that really hire, that's the people that give me budget to go hire. And if you do one of those, I think those are great opportunities too. Um, but I'll go back to what I originally said. You know, if you, if you can go and get a, just a basic IT job in one of the 1,250 companies here in town, look for the opportunity in there, even if you're just patching systems or using systems management technology, all of those vulnerability management technology to validate this, those systems are secure and hardened, all those are in the sphere of learning InfoSec. Because on, on one side, the systems admin side builds the systems. The security side validates that they're there. They do penetration testing, vulnerability management. They validate that. And then there's compliance people that validate that they've actually done it. And they can say, yeah, they've done it. And here's a checklist that we follow to go do, to validate those things. And, and it's, it's an ecosystem of people that can have their hands on the systems, can check and validate those systems and keep them, make sure they're safe. And then another group that actually says that everything is good and they validate that and validate the compliance for it and they can provide an audit, uh, fine, uh, audit materials to show that they, without a shadow of a doubt, have, have the materials to prove that things are done. And so there's tons, I mean, again, in this entire space, I can't think of one person that can't get into cyber. I really can't. Um, you know, I, I have obviously, you know, for folks that are technically minded, it's a great field for people that are technically minded. It's a great field for people that um, like to solve puzzles. It's a great field uh, for people that are both introverts and extroverts because you ha it takes all kinds. And again, it's one of those ones where there's just an, an amazing opportunity to be a, be a hero and to be fighting in the digital, um, in the dark web and you're saving thousands of people and they don't even know it and you've just done tremendous work. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, as far as the kids go, Slim, um, I mean, they're, they're expensive, so I was thinking about getting like a Linux Plus or a uh, Security Plus. Um, what do you what do you say is more important? What do people look at? Say, oh, well, that's a really good certificate, like A Plus or Network Plus. Will they look for more in the certificates? So, it, so I'll start with a consulting answer, which is it depends on what kind of job you're looking for. The default one that will guarantee you at least the check on the cert, the number two, the certification, is your, is the CISSP. 
all of the other certifications are more unique to the job that you're looking at. So the ones that you mentioned were more systems administration, system security, um, network oriented security. So if you're trying to ra um, land like a firewall admin or uh, a network admin, network security administration job, those are the certs you'd be looking for. Yeah, some of the best ones on incident response, so SANS, but it's really expensive, so I, 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 I honestly, I, I find it difficult to appoint students that way, but SANS has probably one of the best ones with the GCIH, GCIH that's the, uh, uh, the general incident handling certification. Um, that's probably one of the best ones that I look for for incident handlers, although in that field, if you wanna be an incident handler, I don't look for someone that's certified at all with that kind of cert. I mean, maybe a CISSP, but I'm, um, like I mentioned earlier, those are my uh, musicians. I'm looking for people that think outside of the box, or I'm, th I'm looking for people that actually have penetration testing experience because it's kind of um, spy versus spy or cat and mouse. I wanna, I wanna hire in people that have, know how to break into stuff so they know who to look for and what to look for. They wanna look for their, 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 doppelga their doppelganger. So, you know, I, I want to give you my background real quick, right? So I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree. I started in aerospace. Nobody was getting jobs in aerospace, so I switched to mechanical because it was the number one uh, most demanded engineering degree. And the interesting part in, in engineering school for me was uh, there was programming in classes. There was Fortran 77 when I was going to school at Virginia Tech. There was um, C, object-oriented programming, when I was at RPI. And then at, our, at Rensselaer Polytechnic, they also had Sun System, Sun, um, Sun Unix systems when I was there, and Solaris systems when I was there. That were um, that as a lab as a lab technician, I was asked to do C programming. So inherent in the degree that I was in, I was getting some programming experience. But the reality is um, that served me right in the beginning of my career to get to get the job, but it didn't land the job. The, actually, what landed was it was actually. Um, uh, I was technically astute, so I, I believe that the job, uh, I mean, me now being a hiring uh, manager, I'm looking for people that have the technical bones underneath them, that, hey, they, they seem smart, and then they carry themselves well, and that's, that's actually the tough part. It's actually the soft skills. In fact, like um, at, um, at US Bank in Elevon, I actually started a CISO Academy for my entire um, organization, so I've, I have 107 people in my organization um, that, my first two classes were how to not be a cop and how to be a firefighter. Because think about it, right? I mean, even on Waze, there's an app on Waze to tell you when a cop's around the corner. No one wants to deal with a cop. And in InfoSec, the reality is, when you see a, a fireman, you're like, oh, it's a fireman. Hey, they're here to help us. They're here to help keep us safe. And there's a lot of InfoSec people today in the market that are very kind of hardcore. It's my way or the highway. They're very elite mentality. And I think if, um, from a hiring perspective, people can come in with a technical back, technical degree and show that, hey, they're friendly and they're nice, they have good people skills. Those are some of the people that I hire even if they don't have experience. So even if I, if I skip that second checkbox, I'm like, oh, you know what, that person's a good person. And I have a role that it's an entry level role, I'll, I can put them in this and I can raise them, I can raise them up. And so, you know, so I think program is good. So going full into your, your question, I think that having program experience is definitely good. Having any kind of IT experience is good. Technical experience is good. When I say IT, it's, again, managing a systems, managing routers. You're not going to get that unless there's a special program at school for that. So if there are, then you can say, hey, you went through that. But I'm telling you, even the hiring manager can say, well, what experience did you put it to ex real experience? And so it'll be a little iffy if you don't even if you took it in class. So unless you have, even if you got the certification, you got a CCNA, that's a certified Cisco network analyst. And it's about a $1,500 certification. It's a lot, right? Um, so that's why I really kind of, especially with college kids, it's the experience that's really huge and you're getting your degree. And, and to me, like finding a way to find that first job, and that's why, again, I had you guys repeat after me and, 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 and say you're looking for someone that's dumb enough to hire you, that, that literally is. The good news is, for those of you guys that don't want, I'll leave my card with you all. LinkedIn's the best way to get a hold of me. Um, you know, if you're looking for those entry-level jobs, I have colleagues 
18 Fortune 1000, Fortune 500 in Atlanta, 29 Fortune 1000. Those are all my friends. I know all 29. By the way, U.S. Bank is not headquartered in Atlanta, so we're not even in the mix, right? So there's 1,200. I, I, in, in my circle of friends, there's 300 CISOs in Atlanta that I know. So as you all are trying to find those entry-level jobs, and there's a CISO in the back of the room wearing the black Kansas State University shirt, you all should get to know that's Stephen Gay. You know, the opportunity to start building up your experience is like right after you leave this room with me. And, and I'm telling you, like, you guys, I, I, what, I, what I always love and like what I mentioned about my 13th CISO, CTO that's out there is five years from now, shoot me a note on LinkedIn and say, hey, the, what you told me, I'm living the dream you, you mentioned. And I love it. I mean, that's, that's what I want. I mean, I, I don't want necessarily just people that can kind of, I mean, you do have to keep, you know, a roof over your head. I want, I want those folks here because we need, we need folks in the industry. But the, the folks that five, ten years from now, you, you know, everything that I just told you, six-figure job, you call your own shots, you're halfway to half a million dollars in your nest egg because you saved it. You didn't buy some stupid stuff. Saved it. Okay, buy one dumb thing. Um, like, that, ping me. Let me know. Because, I mean, that, I, I love that. Because, I mean, I, I was in your seat 23 years ago, and I, I had no idea. You know, I thought I was going to be, I wanted to be, you know, my first, you know, my first year at Virginia Tech, I wanted to be um, uh, an aerospace engineer. None of my friends were getting jobs. They were graduate students. And I'm like, oh, man, you all are going, to PH, going for your PhDs now. I'm not going to, I don't want to go to school that long because this is hard. And so I switched over to mechanical engineering. Um, and I, I, I had no idea about cyber. And what led to that was my co-op that had me doing Unix administration. And then doing Unix administration, they're like, hey, I was waiting for my top secret clearance to get through. They're like, hey, you know how to code? And you know this IT stuff. Can you do this mainframe stuff? And by the way, it's, it's uh, mainframe security. And I was hanging out in their IT group as a kind of like a waiting for my security clearance. And they came back and were like, hey, you did so great with the mainframe stuff. Hey, we got these. Um, sun systems, and we're getting rid of our VAXs and the sun systems, we're going to Solaris systems. And we have these HPUX Unix systems. Will you do all these Unix boxes? I'm like, sure. And you know, one manager came up like, hey, do you know how to break into this? Because I got locked out. And I'm like, yeah, I can break in. I've been doing that since I was a kid. And so it snowballed into, hey, all the stuff that I was doing all added up to an IT career, a technology career, and a cyber career. And cybersecurity is actually more than just an IT role. I'm working with all forms of the business now. So, I mean, th this has been just an amazing career for me because I, I basically can go anywhere with it. And then I, I find some fun folks that um, have some of the alternative, uh, you know, desires and goals that I have, and they're, they're in this space, and, and they're, they're brilliant. There's a lot of brilliant superheroes that are in this industry. Any other questions? Oh, Phil. Uh, Phil, so, I'm glad you brought up the business. So, we had a list So, um, you know, again, a lot of, uh, true, I think a lot of people, they, they know IT, but the interesting part is I, IT is kind of the, the back office where we, we provide email, we provide websites, we provide servers, but there's the businesses that are there. So in my time with Cisco and at Dell and at Alcatel, th those businesses at Cox Communications and here at U.S. Bank and Alabon, they have a business, right? They're in the banking industry or they provide voice, video, and data, internet. They're the internet. That's what Cox was. Um, or at, at, at uh, Cisco and at Dell, they provide, they manufacture technology. So the IT folks are back here providing those back-end services, but there's a, there's a whole other groups that create products and services that generate revenue. And so my teams are interoperating with those groups to make sure that we're selling stuff that's safe. Because God forbid we put out a piece of technology or we have services that are out there that are actually unsafe and create a problem in cyberspace. That's why cybersecurity has gotten so big because historically a lot of companies, I was out in the hallway and somebody was talking about, hey, their company, they just sell beds or they sell pipes. Well, I'm like, do you have technology in your, industry, in your business? Yeah. Well, you know you got to keep that safe, right? We do. Yeah, because a botnet was just launched from your phone system. <laughs> a botnet was just um, uh, sent out from all of the webcams you have in your, your, your business. By the way, I've been watching you through all your webcams and your 
your buildings because they're all default passwords. There's no, there's no passwords on them. And so this, the reason why I like, the, um, you know, I'm going to kind of go in this space with this industry is every company of the 1,250, they don't even realize they have IT needs and they don't realize they have security needs. You can cut your teeth there because you're going to be that person because you're here with me thinking, well, what's the security element about this job? Because there is a security element of that job. If you look hard enough, there, there is one. All right, any other awesome questions? Great. All right, hey, I look forward to seeing you guys out there. Again, it's a, um, it's a, it's, it's a great field, and I hope you guys join me in the, in the, in the industry. Thank you.